Sorry about that. I was stuck in Atlanta traffic, and uh, it is no joke. I can only imagine. Well, traffic anywhere is no joke, but Atlanta is just crazy, right? Yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know why everybody was uh, traveling today. Um, <laughs> it's a, it's Thursday. Come on, guys, stay home. Where do you have to be? Come on. <laughs> exactly. You know, I just let me say goodbye to my friend uh, in peace. Uh, it sounds like she died. She did not die. I was just saying she's leaving. She's a reporter and she got a job in Portland. So uh, I'm, I'm just <laughs> saying goodbye. To I'm that. so glad she's employed and not dead. <laughs> Well, thank you. I appreciate you for sitting down uh, and uh, talking to me. Uh, I, I've been a huge fan since I saw you on AP Bio, so uh, it, it's it's great to awesome. to finally to meet somebody from that show. Oh, it's so it's so fun to sit and chat for sure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's uh, well. I guess we'll start there. Uh, AP Bio uh, coming. It's on on Peacock, and uh, now we're in what the third season, uh, and, and fourth. fourth, fourth. Believe it or not, oh, yeah. Gosh. And now, and now this season's it's uh it's as weird as it it's weirder than it was when it was on uh, 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 NBC. Yeah, it, definitely. Doing, especially you know seeing you in that that alien makeup. Oh my god, <laughs> such a such a such a trippy episode. What a, what a great episode too. I know, and that that episode actually was supposed to be I think episode eight or nine of season three, um, but then we got shut down because of the pandemic. Um, and, you know, in a way, I think it kind of worked out almost for the better because it's such a great, like, season opener, bam, here we are, new season, whole new, you're right, like, uh, vibe, there are just, uh, Mike O'Brien's getting, you know, weirder and um, taking bigger and bigger risks, and it's just, it's incredible to watch that show kind of evolve into what it is today right and uh, i also I, I i've noticed this especially when you first popped up your character is one of the more grounded people in the show as opposed to <laughs> everyone's got it like like uh glenn's character has a vendetta and then Patton's character just wants to be like friends with everybody paula's character yeah. want, is is people like everybody's got something and then you are the one that's kind of keeping this the school centered uh and you're actually you're you're actually the, probably the coolest person there because you know you're just like this this cool teacher that that everybody seems to uh, enjoy and have in the school yeah definitely lynette is like she's definitely an absolute weirdo but somehow is less weird than everybody else and i love i love how that character always has that kind of twinkle of knowledge in her eye um like you said, everybody else is just crazy and antics and um, they have all of these very obvious <laughs> um, hangups and insecurities. And Lynette is just like, I don't know guys, it doesn't have to be that hard. Let's just eat a sandwich and relax. <laughs> um, and yeah, I like I like that juxtaposition of of her with Glenn's character because um, you know Jack is such a you know kind of ego maniac, but secretly or not so secretly um, desperate for um, affection and for acceptance. And I think she she brings that out of him in a really interesting way. And uh, and then comparing her to your character on United States of Al, which I watched, I'd never seen that. And I only, I grew interested because I knew that you, you all threw, threw out an episode essentially and, and, and did one about the Afghan refugee crisis, which is uh, like, you know, you hear shows do this all the time. You, like uh, I think law and order SVU, when that came back, they said, we're going to do an entire episode about uh, black lives matter and stop AAPI hate and all that stuff. And, uh, and that yeah. makes me a lot more fascinated. So uh, kudos to to you and the team and everybody over there. That's 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 a very big uh, step to take, especially for a freshman series. We'll go into a sophomore year. Yeah, I'm unbelievably proud of the all of the writers. Not only because I think from the time that 
you know, we started to hear news out of Afghanistan that, you know, the Taliban was taking over very, very quickly to them getting the footage into the editing room was less than a month. Right. Um, and anybody who knows anything about writing for television, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an involved process and it takes some time. And they not only rewrote our season premiere, um, which will be going up October 7th, um, but they were also a war room actually on the phone with Marines at the airport, trying to evacuate friends and family, trying to get in touch with anybody they could possibly know who could help um, their loved ones. Um, so going through that and also inserting that into the script, um, I'm just floored in an awe of, of their work. And we're all so, so proud of the episode. It's gonna be very different, but yeah, ad addressing head on what our show is about, which is these Afghan interpreters and what we promised them and that we should keep that promise. Hmm. So I'm excited for everybody to see it, to say the least. Yeah, I, and I really, I think people should watch Al and also AP Bio, obviously, but I think Al is, um, it's it's a show that I think CBS would have made, you know, six years ago when they were not diverse and uh, when they were, uh, you know, really aiming towards middle America. But now they're casting their shows with 50 percent people of color and uh, or diverse, diverse casting. And then 25 percent of the people behind the scenes have to be people of color. Uh, but mm -hmm. Al in particular stands out to me because it is. A, it's a comedic, it's a sitcom, multicam, but it do, it is steeped in uh, with with dramatic uh, sensibility, and uh, you know it's and, and it and it kind of it kind of hits you. You know, you have twenty minutes now on on broadcast. Yeah, it hits you like immediately. And uh, Parker Young's character uh, talking about how he uh, uh, you know his he he doesn't want to talk about his wife, and then seeing his wife and them like she's mad almost immediately when she's uh, sitting there talking to Adhere's character. And then, uh, and then yeah. you, when you are like, your character says, uh, Hey, you guys want to go out? I'll see you in the morning. And then he says, she's not going to come back in the morning. And then hearing your backstory, yeah. it's, uh, it's tough to hear, but that's, that's the real stuff that comes from people who have experienced this. And, uh, and I think it's, I think it's, there's a lot of stories that can be told, uh, through, through that show. Yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely rich with ways in which they can take all of the storylines like you said everybody's everybody's touched by conflict and war i mean everybody everybody knows somebody everybody has their own unique experience with it and they aren't stories that are told uh, very often um and if they are i think that you know particularly veterans um i think that there's kind of this narrow um sort of depiction of veterans a lot on TV. So, you know, we're excited to get into the more of the nuance of those stories. And also we are a comedy, we are. <laughs> I explain this show to people and they're so confused. Like, wait, but it's a comedy <laughs> with a laugh track by Chuck Lorre? Wait, what? Big Bang Theory? I don't understand. Um, and I, I love that because it is, uh, you know, there's a lot of gravity to the the subjects that we're talking about, but there is also a lot of lightness and a lot of stuff to be mined from that. And um, yeah, there's there's just there's so much to explore, and I'm excited for season two because we do get the full 22 episode season this this year to to really explore and and, and dive into all of that stuff. So not only is that a full paycheck. But uh, it's, and it's it's guaranteed work. I mean, it's, it's great. What do you uh, working on a, a single cam like AP Bio and then doing multicam? Uh, is it is it hard to to switch back and forth? Or yeah, you know, I mean, multicam is you know five, I, I I think five days a week still. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it is it difficult to go from a play like atmosphere with a multicam and then having to go to the single camera setup and uh, where you basically have a lot more time to fill out scenes? Yeah, with with the multi, I mean, it's so much so much more like theater. Um, we have right now two full days of rehearsal, which is such a luxury in film and television. Um, 
to be able to kind of collaborate on, well, would it be funny if we did this? Let's try it. Okay, that didn't work. Let's try something else. Whereas with single camera, you you don't have that kind of time. So much more time is is spent with the setup and the location and all of that. So you kind of figure it out as the cameras are rolling. Um, so we we have the the luxury of of that kind of process ahead of time. And then under normal circumstances, when there isn't a worldwide pandemic, um, we get to do that in front of a live audience. And and that's the the cool part about sitcoms with a laugh track. The the audience is the last collaborator. You know, they are the the um, the final line in terms of what is funny and what is not because you can find something hilarious all week in rehearsal but if they don't laugh it's getting rewritten and and that process is really really fun it's uh and also i something i noticed about al having you know banked all these episodes uh is that it's it's the it's the rare it's the new like sitcoms used to be or multicams you know the audience is right there and like you said we have this pandemic to contend with uh but now i think since the introduction of shows like uh, uh how i met your mother where we could where, where they're, they go out to streets and stuff there's uh, yeah. i call it like a fourth wall multicam sitcom because uh i especially in the um in the pilot when dean norris sits down Usually it's not blocks like that. It doesn't have one character at each corner. It's usually all the cameras yeah. are sitting on one side. So it was very yes. cool to see him sit down and block a camera and then a wall go behind him. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. It really opens up the 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 breathing room of the show. Yeah, it's it's very interesting to you don't realize how much you understand about what you're used to seeing until that fourth wall goes in and you're like, wait a minute, I I feel like this is naughty. I'm not supposed to see that wh what the rest of their house looks like. You never see what the the rest of the diner looks like in Seinfeld or or whatever. Um, but yeah, we we are able to kind of creatively contend with those things and say, look, why not? Um, and actually, in season two, I'm really excited that um, I, I guess the the Dugan family got an. Uh, a little bit of an extension on their house because that kitchen gets a little bit more room and a window and we're like oh good i'm glad we have more <laughs> space to really you know push out that chair um but yeah yeah the the the, the fourth wallness of it is it, it is breaking down and i think that the the form is is changing just like everything else, it's evolving and being able to make it without that audience with a little more time to to shoot more footage. Um, it is, it's a different beast, but it's still really, um, really interesting to work in that way. And, uh, and then I also wanted to know about uh, Disjointed. And since that was on Netflix and I think that was touted as, uh, you know, I, I make a lot of uh, quips at Netflix because they seem like to just throw a bunch of paint at the wall and see what sticks and what doesn't. Um, but disjointed, yeah. uh, just like uh, the farm or whatever that show was called with Ashton Kutcher, uh, it was it was heavily touted because it was a, a multicam sitcom and they they really put like their energy behind it and faith behind it. And you guys got a, a decent amount of episodes. What was what was working mm -hmm. on that show like? Uh, and now the, and since you know those came before uh, AP by the regular you know AP bio and uh, United States of Al. What was that yeah. uh, that experience going into these newer shows and, and what'd you take from that? Um, well, I, it was definitely a giant learning experience for me personally because I had never done a, a multicam sitcom before. I never worked in that way. I'd always done like our dramas when I lived in New York um, that always involved me being shot or raped or <laughs> something terrible. Um, and, and then I, I booked disjointed and it was like pot jokes. That's my life now. Great. I'm in, I'm totally in. Um, and yeah, it was, it was kind of, uh, being dropped into the center of kind of like an all-star game already in process because we had, I mean, Kathy Bates, Tone Bell, Chris Red, Betsy Sadar, like all of these insanely funny, insanely talented people. Um, and the, the collaboration of Chuck Lorre, who is, you know, this 
very, very successful um, multicam producer and David Javerbaum, who came from the world of The Daily Show and a little bit more of that like short form sketch kind of format, um, I think merged into this kind of beautiful baby of like, of, of this new art form that I, I don't think anything is like disjointed. There's nothing like it. Um, and it kind of felt disjointed at times. And I liked how it uh, kind of lived in the middle of those two kind of voices. Um, so yeah, it was, it was so much fun. And, 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 you know, I'm so sad that we couldn't make more, but um, it, that really prepped me for being able to work more in comedy. And uh, I guess I'm a, a funny comedy actress now, you know, it's, it's kind of strange how, you know, the industry starts to kind of tell you who you are or show you who you are more. Um, and that was probably the beginning of my love affair with with comedy. Mm -hmm. Do you think you would ever go back to uh, drama trying to, to not trying to be a drama actress? That sounds reductive, but do, do, <laughs> do you think that- We're all dramatic. <laughs> you're right, exactly. Hey, there you go. Uh, do you think that, that you, know, you have space for that within your, your acting prowess again? Oh, definitely. I, I, love, I love drama. I think that that's what I always assumed I would do. You know, I, I went to drama school at NYU and I thought that I would do Shakespeare and, you know, indie, you know, films and stuff like that. And, um, and, and then I, you know, started making poop jokes on TV and it's just, you just never know. You just never know what's going to happen. Um, but life is long careers are, so varied these days. I mean, it's it's not like it used to be where if you were on a sitcom, that was kind of your lane and that's what you did for your entire career. People go back and forth and, and do all kinds of different things. And I'm definitely excited to to switch it up. Yeah, it's uh, people people do go back and forth. Like in the early 2000s, you, it was unheard of of a movie star to do a TV show. Now movies, they're like eight, like at uh, the Emmys this past week, you just saw so many A-list people there that that have done a bunch of big blockbusters. And uh, at, at some yeah. point, I'm thinking this is unfair. Like these comedic <laughs> actors, these people that are on TV have worked to be here, and you're just like, oh, maybe I'll do a, a, a Netflix limited series. It's it's, it's but you know, seriously, that, I think that does open up the door for people like you uh, to to jump into that that big film space as well, because uh, it's it's it seems to be uh, a little bit more fluid now. Yeah, I think it's I think it's exciting. I. And I, I had to laugh too. And when Kate Winslet won, and she, she acted all surprised, like she was like, "What? No! Like you're literally Kate Winslet! Oh my gosh! How are you still humble?" <laughs> and then, I'm then, so glad she's humbled. And then that show comes back for a second season. Like, come on, man! It's it's not fair. Yeah, it's 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 not. But it is also like you said. It's it's the the breakdown of the forms and the rules. I think is is ultimately good for storytelling because, you know, if you if you have a great story to tell, um, I feel like you you don't have to be so worried about like well which which form will get me the most traction because who knows you you could do a limited series you could do a podcast you could do a film and if it's good and if it's correct for the story people will see it and people will be excited about it yeah that uh that that take that reminds me of um you know glenn also went to a, a good school like you and uh and and he's and he's a well-trained actor uh and speaking of telling stories he he made a uh, coffee town like a straight to dvd movie and i think about that movie mm -hmm. constantly because i watch sunny constantly and uh and, and like in that that year he took off to do uh, uh, AP Bio uh, and, and, mm -hmm. and see, you know, to to test the waters in a different area. Uh, and then also uh, Caitlin Olsen, his, uh, his show mate, cast mate on that show, uh, also yeah. doing the Mick. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, so you, you are, you know, with your training, you could always 
you know, have that that next project on deck. You know, maybe if you want to do a play, I don't know if you uh, wanted to do the theater uh, uh, fully. Uh, I would love to do the seven. theater. Okay. Okay. Well, tell tell me, like, what, what's your theater experience like? My theater experience uh, is very downtown devised kind of uh, some of it quite avant-garde actually um, and and deeply fun. I mean, out of college, uh, I worked a lot with a theater collective called Fresh Ground Pepper that was started and is continued to be run by some of my my best buddies. And the whole idea of it was, to create a space where people could try things out and it was safe and there was no like, is this good? Is this art? You know, there was none of that. It was just like, here's a prompt, come and make something. And then whatever you learn from it is up to you. Um, so a lot of work started in that kind of incubator. And, you know, we did the Fringe Festival a lot and we did, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, downtown theater like festival type things um and none of it ended up I think sticking in the way that uh we would have liked but it was all really cool and uh experimental um so that that's a lot of what I did and that really lent itself frankly to the the comedy thing so when I was auditioning for commercials and for ultimately disjointed that moved me out here. Um, I was using a lot of that, you know, kind of think on your feet. Um, you know, what is, what is the, the strange choice? What is the unexpected choice um, that would get a rise out of, you know, a, a kind of downtown theater audience? Um, but yeah, I, I love theater. I, I'm so excited to see it back. Um, that's so heartening to see. Um, and I hope it continues to thrive. Is there a, a show that you're looking forward to seeing? Oh, gosh. Um, that's a great question. I don't even know what's coming out. A, a dear friend of mine from college is actually in Diana the Musical. So I have to plug that. If you're in New York, go see Diana the Musical and Real Hard Tramp is great as Prince Charles. Um, okay, I want to see- And it's uh, kind of, it's- Go on. Well, I was just gonna say, it's kind of cool. That you can actually see it on Netflix soon. Um, you know, that's, that's starting to happen. I think Hamilton kind of, maybe was the 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 first in the pandemic to to put out a, a you know a filmed version of it and I know I think come from away is is also available to see you know theater theater is best obviously in person in a theater with a with them live but I'm I'm also glad that it's it's more accessible as well I uh, I saw I know Bruce Springsteen on Broadway is on Netflix, uh, but I am determined to make my way to New York to watch him do it live. Determined. Yes. Oh. Yes. The the father of New Jersey. I don't know if you follow New Jersey on Twitter, but they. No. <laughs> I think I think today is his birthday, and they said Happy Birthday, Dad, and that just gave me a huge chuckle. I I love Bruce. I love Bruce. Um. Well, Elizabeth, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I, I thank you. I just want to thank you so much for doing this. Uh, I, your character on uh, AP Bio, and now I'm a fan of uh, United States of Val. It's uh, it's uh, truly great to see somebody uh, very funny and to talk to them as well and uh, to see them flourish and, and grow as a, uh, b a blossoming comedic actor. <laughs> Blossoming. Wow. I'll take that. Thank you so much. This was, this was so fun. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course.